My name is Maria and this is my cancer story. In February of 2012, uh, I discovered a lump under my arm. I went to see my breast specialist who told me, let's just go straight to surgery and get this lump removed. I had recently, six months prior, uh, had some precancerous cells removed from my breast and so she said, let's just not even mess around with the biopsy, let's just go have this lump removed. Uh, I waited a couple of weeks, which was a little unusual for this doctor to get the pathology results. Um, I found out later that was because she was having them double checked. The initial patho pathology came back as benign, but she recognized, and the pathologist also did, that there was a potential that um, the cells that were removed were actually cancerous, but just a very rare form of breast cancer. And so my doctor looking out for me had the slides sent to a second pathologist to be reviewed and sure enough they came back as uh, cancer, something called metaplastic breast cancer. Uh, the variety I had was spindle cell. There are a couple of different subtypes of metaplastic breast cancer. Um, so uh, that was kind of the beginning of my journey. I uh, went to see her. She um, did the normal um, sentinel node biopsy which came back clear. Uh, she sent me to see an oncologist uh, he um, told me what kind of chemotherapy would be offered for me, and I began treatment. Uh, I did uh, something called ACT uh, dose dense, which means that I had the um, chemotherapy um, administered every two weeks instead of every three weeks, and uh, so it's on a, a faster pace, and which is why they refer to it as dose dense. And it's a little bit more difficult on your body, but uh, they feel like it's especially beneficial for some aggressive forms of breast cancer, which metaplastic breast cancer is. Um, metaplastic breast cancer is only found in about 1% of tumors, and so it's extremely rare. Um, often it's triple negative, which is another highly aggressive form of breast cancer. Uh, so often you'll be treated with the same kind of regimens that uh, women with triple negative breast cancer will get. Uh, after the chemotherapy, um, I had radiation, so I had 35 doses of radiation. Uh, I was uh, just starting to feel better. That ended in July of 2012. I was getting my hair back, uh, uh, starting to feel better when I felt another lump on the same side of my uh, breast, on my right breast. I had had a lumpectomy, uh, breast conserving surgery. And so that happened around Thanksgiving of 2012. Uh, by the time you sort of think about it in your mind, is this really a lump? Am I really feeling this? It's not my imagination. It's not just a cyst that's going to go away. A couple of weeks pass. And uh, so by December 27th, I had seen my doctor and we had uh, had a uh, sonogram which, just, which noted some additional growth that needed to be looked at. And I was having a biopsy. Um, this time a needle biopsy. So um, basically within the same year of discovering the first lump, I had discovered a second one, despite having a pretty harsh chemo regimen and radiation and, of course, the initial surgery. So um, January of 2013, my doctor called again and said, well, you have another metaplastic breast cancer and uh, you really need to have a mastectomy this time. So February the 1st, I had a mastectomy with reconstruction immediately, and by March, I was again taking a second round of chemotherapy. Uh, after having this experience where I had this rare form of cancer, um, and despite the fact that my medical team was excellent and had heard of it before and had even treated patients with this kind of cancer before, the reality is that there's no standard of care for women who are diagnosed with this rare form of cancer. And so basically um, you're offered the next best guess that um, medical doctors have and most of the time that's based on the triple negative aspect of the tumor. Uh, the reality is with only 1% of women having this kind of cancer there just aren't enough studies done and not enough is known about this cancer, what makes it different, what makes it aggressive, and what could possibly um, help stop its uh, aggressive nature. Um, up to, since, since my experience, I've done a lot of research, I've become a metaplastic breast cancer advocate, um, becoming a member of Coleman's Advocates in Science, um, 
going to in National Breast Cancer Coalition's lead advocacy training, participating in the Rev Forum, um, and becoming a board member of a metaplastic breast cancer nonprofit. And so um, my main goal now is to help other women potentially avoid having that first round of chemotherapy that isn't effective and that uh, leads to, in my case, additional uh, additional surgery, additional chemotherapy, additional treatment, uh, with the first treatment basically being for naught, uh, or, and even more importantly, for the women who who have unsuccessful treatments with this kind of cancer the first time, and unfortunately the cancer spreads uh, to distant sites and becomes metastasized. So what uh, we really need now is a standard of care for this disease, and that's what I spend my time working on, um, trying to figure out a way that I can work within the medical community, uh, work with um, the doctors who are becoming experts in this area, and uh, women who are diagnosed with this um, through social media. I was able to meet uh, over 400 other women with metaplastic breast cancer, and we have our own support group online uh, for all these women, and so we're trying to bring those communities together and really get um, some momentum behind the idea that even if we can't cure our cancer, we can help these women from potentially having their cancers metastasize and also from women having to have multiple treatments, some of the treatments, again, going for nothing, basically, uh, and all that poison and side effects of chemotherapy for no reason. So. Uh, that's my story. Um, I always tell people the thing about getting a rare diagnosis of cancer. There's two things that you first want to do. The first thing is you want to seek out others who share your rare diagnosis in the hopes of finding others who are alive. Uh, it's a really scary thing to hear that that you have something that's so unusual that the doctors haven't seen it or few doctors have seen it and that there's no real treatment plan specifically designed for you and so if you can find someone who has the same kind of cancer it can really help you feel more positive and hopeful towards your own treatment and the second thing everyone with cancer especially rare cancers wants to do is tell you exactly why theirs is different from everyone else's and how their story is unique and how their cancer is different. And that's especially true among women with metaplastic breast cancer. And so um, we're trying to bring all those women together to tell their stories through social media, um, through uh, our group. And um, if you know anyone with metaplastic breast cancer, please tell them to seek us out at www.metaplasticbc.com. And there is hope, and we are going to find a way to improve outcomes for women with these rare forms of cancer. And I hope to be a part of that.